Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin. This, this is Lampworking 101.40. This bead dates back all the way to ancient China, and it is called the Warring States Bead. I've always been drawn to this specific pattern. You've probably made a couple of these before without realizing that there's a really interesting history to them. The Warring States Beads refers to the period of ancient China between 475, it's up in the air about exactly when it began, but it's 475 to 221 BC. This was a period in time where China was a conglomeration of, of different states. In particular, seven different states. All seven states began warring with each other. The Qin Dynasty was the prevailer of these warring states. That period in time marks the moment between ancient China and imperial China. It's a very fascinating little bit of history for you guys to know about. I'm happy that there's a, a history uh, to this pattern and these specific beads. You should check it out. Look up Warring States beads online and you can see a whole bunch of different beads that were produced during that specific time. The patterns and the colors are just amazing. I hope that you guys enjoy this and make some Warring States beads. Thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time in the dungeon. Here we go. So for the base of this first Warring States bead, I am using a color that I did a review on not too long ago. It's called Calico. And this time the color ended up being completely different from a, one of the demo pieces. So I was pleasantly surprised. It was almost like an orangish, pinkish, yellowish background. It was really beautiful. Every time I use this color, I get a different uh, range of color, anywhere from, oop, I just uh, popped a little off the, the rod there, but that's okay. All I'm doing here is making a barrel shape bead. But yeah, this color is super cool. Check it out on the uh, review. Anyway, moving along, I'm just shaping this bead up first on the marvering table and then working the sides in just a little tiny bit to straighten them out. And then I'm just going for a slightly rounded edge elongated bead. And I'm starting out small because I am going to encase this in clear. I thought that these dots would look really cool with clear in between the base colors so the dots have a slight shadow to them. It worked out real nice. And I'm just swiping my clear on, getting a large amount hot, enough to swipe all the way down my bead. And usually at the end, I will wrap a little bit of extra clear on my ending points. And that'll help the clear to go all the way to the edges. It's getting there. Take your time when you make these. And always take your time when you do your base bead. That's really super important. You want your base bead to look um, exactly the way you want it to before you start adding your pattern. So I decided that my bead could be a little bit bigger and went ahead and added those extra clear wraps to it. And when I start working longer than the flame is wide, I make sure I move the mandrel back and forth every time when I'm reheating. So I get both sides and the whole bead is hot instead of just the center. Okay, now for the pattern. This first one I'm doing is on the traditional side to Warring State Speeds. Well, they're all kind of traditional. <laughs> 
And I'll begin by adding the first row and then coming in, heating each one up and flattening it individually with my butter knife. And I'll do that for each one of these first sets of dots that I lay down. So in the picture, I noticed that Warring States beads have usually a larger dot in the center and smaller dots surrounding it on both sides. And I'm just continuing to heat and melt these in. I want these to be exactly where I need them to be. And I like this method because I can very gently push the dot on center if it's off center. Now we're going to go with little three little dots in the center of each one of those larger dots. I find it really amazing that some of the ancient beads have uh, between five and six dots on these little uh, base dots. It is amazing to me. I can't get more than three on there, but I don't really work in a micro micro scale either. <laughs> Usually I like to work on the, on the larger side and that can get me in trouble uh, sometimes, but it's worth it. I'm using a variety of violets on both of the beads that I'm making today. So I have a, a medium violet, <laughs> a dark violet, and I think an ink blue, as well as I decided that I would offset those colors with the dark sky blue transparent. I love that color. So I just start gently stacking these up and the most important part is to maintain the heat within your bead. And I usually find that by heating each one of these up individually, I, you know, you're also heating up your bead. So as long as you continue to maintain that heat and you're working on the bead, you should be fine. And at this point, I'm just stretching out those corner beads, or the corner dots, sorry. And then not necessarily adding the colors uh, exactly the same all the way around. Sometimes I'll add a, like a blue and then a violet and then a blue and then a violet to make it a little bit more interesting. Have fun with your colors. If you have a hard time picking out colors, grab five colors that you really like, that you think look good together, and then take two of them away and just use three. I always find that three colors is uh, great for harmonizing your glass. And then at the very end here, I'm going to just continue to keep adding smaller and smaller dots, but not trying to really melt these dots in that much at all. Make sure you count your dots too, so you know where you are. Well, I'm just about done here. The very final pattern is that beautiful tiny dot, I guess I would call it lace work around um, the primary dots. And this one, this is uh, one of those patterns that can be slightly intimidating for me because looking at the ancient Warring States beads, it is just incredible how many dots they can string together around uh, their primary dots. It's really a beautiful thing.
Now I was hoping to add three little tiny dots in between the two slightly larger dots, but it just didn't work out that way. It really helps if you have many different size stringers. And if you're working with a very fine, fine stringer, you can achieve even smaller dots a lot, a lot easier that way. And there's our first Warring States bead. Yay! And I did, am I adding more? I am. I did add a little bit more. I thought I needed a little something to uh, set off that that lacy pattern there. And I think this worked out really well. I'm happy with this. I hope you guys like it. I do too. I'm, I'm glad that uh, the colors worked out real good for me too. Now I would love to know if any of you guys have ever made beads like this and didn't realize uh, the history behind them. I always find that coming up with different patterns and unique patterns are hard to do. <laughs> you think you have a very unique pattern and then all of a sudden you see it everywhere. <gasps> but it doesn't mean it's exactly the same because you really put your own into these beads, your own colors. Like this second one that I did, I just love this one. The base of this is bubblegum pink and this is a beautiful pink and it really worked out well with all the violets and the blue that I'm using. Sometimes I'll, I'll sit here and do my little talking points and then realize this right here back to back to normal speed. This is completely normal speed not slowed down, not sped up. So you see how it takes time to build up these patterns. It doesn't happen in, you know, three minutes like it does on, on YouTube. But you see on this bead, it's still the same exact technique. It's laying down your layers of dots and then going in and flattening them with your butter knife. And once you have those dots established, then you start building upwards. This layered dot look is so beautiful. This bead in particular, I just, I swear to God, I just wanted to pop it in my mouth and like chew it up and blow a bubble. It just looks so yummy. When I make beads like this, I always wonder what would it taste like if it had a good, you know, if it had a flavor, what would it be? <laughs> anyway, you guys, I do hope you enjoyed this. And as always, we'll see you soon in the dungeon.